presentation from our prominent presenter, whom I believe shall enrich our insight and knowledge regarding the term of the seminar. Well, before the presentation begin, allow me to introduce the presenter. Our third presenter is Dr. Marcita Sahril. Dr. Marcita Sahril is a senior assistant professor and teacher educator at the Sultan Hassan al Bolkiah Institute of Education, SHBIE, University Brunei Darussalam, UBD. She was appointed a lecturer in the university in August 2001. Dr. Masita held a several administrative appointments, academic group convener for the mathematics education, program leader for initial teacher preparation, deputy dean, director of studies, and the head of teaching and learning center for the office of assistant vice counselor, UBD. Dr. Masita was appointed as a senior lecturer in August 2012 and 30, and has a senior assistant professor in October 2017. Dr. Masita's research interest lies in, a, in the teacher and teacher's education, mathematics education, higher education, 21st century teaching and learning, school-based assessment, classroom research, and youth practice and their education. Her educational qualifications are follows. In 1999, she attained her bachelor science mathematics degree in University of Northumbria at Newcastle. In 2000, she attained her Master of Science degree in uh, University of Reading, United Kingdom. In 2005, she attained her Master of Education degree from University of Melbourne, Australia. In 2009, she attained her Doctor of Education degree from University of Melbourne, Australia. Well, for this season, Dr. Marcita will have 40 minutes to present the material and 20 minutes for the NA season. Without further ado, I would like to welcome our third presenter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Marcita Sahril. Dr. Marcita Sahril, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Eva. <clears throat> um, let me just share the screen of my PowerPoint presentation. Um, how do I do this? <laughs> Are you able to see my screen yet? Eva, are you able to see my PowerPoint? Sorry, I can't hear you. You are muted, Eva. Okay, uh, sorry, I can un unmute. Yeah. Okay, uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. You haven't shared your screen. Okay. okay. I'll try again. Can you see now my 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 presentation? Not yet. Oh, how do I do this then? Hmm. I share. Share I, screen. Yeah, I share the screen. And then email oh, no, I don't know how. Uh, can you email your uh, presentation okay. to, to Sharina. Sharina? All right. Uh, luckily, we started early. My power, my presentation is supposed to start at eleven thirty-five. Oh, sorry, ten thirty-five Indonesian time. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, let me check. Um, if I do share my presentation, 
Uh, am I able to um, click on the PowerPoint? No. Uh, is it Sharina only? Yes, Sharina only. Okay, so I'll send the one with the no animations. Because I have animations on the PowerPoint that, um, it's okay. All right, it's sent via my Gmail. Okay. Miss Sarina? Is there any email? Okay. I, I know a bit of Indone Bahasa Indonesia, a bit only, so, uh, but allow me to present in, in, in English language. Okay, it's not a problem. And I can understand Bahasa as well. There is no email. Mm. Sarina, Miss Sarina said there's uh, can you check your email? junk folder or something? Just because oh. maybe it goes to your uh, junk folder or sorry because it's sent from my Gmail, not my you my work address. Just Would you mind to try again to sure. share your screen? Yeah, share my screen, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not sharing. Not sharing. Yeah, it's not, not nothing is coming out. Miss Arena, it's... Hello, Doctor. Dr. Yeah. Masita. Yeah. Uh, would you mind to open first your uh, PowerPoint uh, folder? Yeah. After that, you minimize again. Okay on your screen. After that, you go back to the Zoom and then uh, click share screen. All right. After share screen, you find out uh, the minimize of your PowerPoint folder, the PowerPoint files, I mean. Have you find it? Yep. Then, and then okay, you, I... you click it. Uh-huh. Uh, and then uh, you click it. After that, you click the button of share. OK. Click OK. The button of share, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then open system preferences is that allow Zoom to share your screen. Click yeah. on this. Ah, I see. Okay. It's too large. Okay. Done. And then PowerPoint. Okay, I think so. It helps. Okay, it's on over here. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, can okay. you see my PowerPoint now? Yes, of yes, course. Of course. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Let Sharina. me start. Thank you, Sharina. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to also thank the committee for this very kind invite for me to present my presentation today. Huh? So to my, the topic of my presentation is staying relevant with the challenges and um, with the challenges and opportunity of contemporary mathematics education research practices. Um, 
Okay, there's no doubt that our researchers, especially in the education field, are required to collect data in school settings. May it be in primary school, kindergarten, high school, um, higher education settings like universities. But with the current challenges that were unexpectedly happened this year, schools had to halt, had to stop, and everything went away because due, due to the pandemic. So anything that we planned well in advance had to be replanned and rescheduled. This is what, what's happening to researchers all around the world. Um, it res I, and I'm sure it resonates to all participants as well. We are not able to go to schools to collect our data, but hopefully the, the pandemic will subside um, slowly and hopefully completely subsiding uh, and stopping like next year. So don't, don't fret or don't be worried because um, there are other ways, there are other means to collect data and you just have to be innovative. In terms of what the, the current trends that are happening in the world in terms of research practices and education, we see that you, you may have seen publications or researches happening in, for, for example, lesson and learning study. The PISA-like problems are very famous in Indonesia. Um, the teaching and learning strategies, uh, CK, PCK, and TPCK is the content knowledge, pedagogical content knowledge, uh, and the technological, pedagogical, con and content knowledge. Yeah? There are researchers in professional development, curriculum assessment, and gaining momentum is the education, the era of IR 4.0. So what's happening with the current situation? We have seen, well, I have seen so many um, uh, new, new calling for, new call for research in relation to the COVID-19, um, especially in education. However, in education, it's quite slow in, in comparison to the health sciences. Health sciences like the medicine, the public health, they are very fast. When COVID-19 started what, in January uh, and February, the health sciences were quick to do their research and publish, but education in the education field, it was quite slow in gaining the momentum. So, but what I have noticed uh, recently was the call for papers from journals, famous journals such as Emerald Publishing, Sage. And on the right side of your screen, these are the uh, COVID-19 related education researches that are happening around the world. For example, the e-learning and blended learning, just like what Prof uh, presented earlier, um, the call for papers for school leadership, quality assurance in the sudden online education, uh, the barriers in online implementation. That was one paper that I've seen back in perhaps in March or April from Indonesia that was published in, in the, one of the journals, international journals. They were quick to publish um, the papers on barriers in online implementation, which was very helpful uh, for us to set the scene in terms of research in the current situation. So as researchers, for us to be, uh, as researchers, we have to be innovative, okay, and to stay relevant with these practices. So we need to evolve as well, especially in this IR 4.0 era, which we also call the digital revolution. revolution. It's inevitable if we don't, if we do not keep up and if we do not reinvent ourselves. Okay. So IR 4.0, uh, where there's so many um, digital platforms coming up or different digital platforms that we can fully utilize in terms of um, online classrooms or online researchers um, that we can look at, especially the online or blended. So for us, especially in the context of this, of this online conference for mathematics and mathematics educators, especially the researchers and practitioners, there's no exceptions. We have to stay relevant, especially with these contemporary research trends that are happening uh, at the moment. Just to set the scene uh, of my presentation, because I will be sharing two studies, two ongoing studies. Um, 
later on, uh, just to set the scene, I, I just want to introduce about the, the, the faculty that I'm from, which is the Sultan Hassan al Bolkiah Institute of Education. We started in as a Maktab Purgur one in 1956. But in 2009, we have become a graduate school of education. So we do not, we no longer offer undergraduate programs, but we offer postgraduate or graduate programs uh, from 2009. And in my faculty, um, there are four, four program leaders that takes care of these. Well, there are two, there are two program leaders that takes care of the courses. The initial teacher preparation, that one offers the professional training for graduates who wants to become teachers. So we have the master of teaching program. The graduate professional de development, uh, that takes care of the master of education by coursework and by research, and the master in counseling, and also the PhD in education program. We also have the continuing professional development because these are bespoke, meaning tailored programs um, for especially for the Ministry of Education teachers in Brunei. Uh, so we do not cater to, unless it's um, specially uh, requested by public, then we will offer the CPD. But if not, we mainly cater for the, uh, for the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of Religious Affairs as well. Um, in terms of school partnership, that is uh, other kaitan or related to the initial teacher preparation, the MTEACH program, because the school partnership will be looking for schools that our students will be going to for their placements, school placements in two semesters. So I'm just going to be focusing on the master of teaching program uh, where we have teacher candidates uh, currently registering, of course, for our program. Um, these teacher candidates uh, will be learning theories at the master's level and how they need to know how to apply these theories and, and in the actual classroom. So we, upon completion, we, are hope, we hope that our graduates of the MTeach program will be master of their subject matter pedagogies. They, they, they are reflective and innovative teacher, especially from the uh, modules or the courses that they undertook in our faculty. They're, they also have to be research-informed teachers, lifelong learners, and especially a professional in the teaching profession. So in the Master of Teaching program, there are five areas of specialization, the early childhood, education and care, the primary, secondary, technical and vocational education, and higher education. So teachers, uh, the teacher candidates will have to, will have to go into one of these areas of specialization, of course, depending on their undergraduate or bachelor degree programs in order to specialize in their master's uh, learning area. So for the teacher candidates, one of their modules uh, in the MTeach program, they have to do a research exercise. This is a core module, meaning that it's a must for them to do it. And it is 12 modular credit it's 100% coursework, meaning that um, they have to do uh, eight, uh, about 8,000 8, or 12,000 words uh, research exercise. So it's like a research project. Mm -hmm. So they, what, when, when they, what they have to do is when they go to the schools, they have to collect data uh, site, to conduct site-based uh, research in their classrooms uh, with their students. Of course, under our supervision, the lecturers in the faculty, because um, they also need to link their research with improvement in the chosen area of investigation. So what they have to do is they have to conduct an action research study. Um, I'll explain later for, uh, further. Uh, they have to investigate systematically the questions related to the design of teaching um, and so forth. So what what in, in, a, in a nutshell, what they have to do is they have to conduct research in their classroom. Um, they have to think of like, for example, a learning strategy that they want to experiment on, on their students and to see whether that, kind, that learning strategy has improved 
um, in, for their students' performance in the learning of mathematics. I'm talking about mathematics uh, teacher candidates. Huh? So what everybody in the MTeach program had to do is they have to write a research report of publishable standard. So this may take um, between six months to one year. The MTeach program itself is 18 months. So for example, um, back in 2018 to 2019, these are some of the MTeach research exercise studies that were conducted by our students in the mathematics learning area. Um, we design it in such a way that they, they have to um, focus on the use of comics and or visual representations. Um, but uh, these, uh, I'm, I'm glad to say uh, four, three, three of these, um, three of these research exercises has been presented last year at S uh, CDAR conference, S-E-A-D-R, Southeast Asia Design Research Conference in, jo in Georgia. Um, and also it has been published as well in the Journal of Physics, if anybody's interested in, in reading it. Huh? So I just wanna show you the kinds of research that they're doing in terms of um, the MTeach program. So in the, for the current, well, the, these, these seven students, they will be graduating soon, perhaps in two months time. This is what they did back in 2019 and the first six months of this year. So these are their topics in terms of the research exercise that they did. Um, TC4, TC uh, stands for teacher candidates. Huh? TC4 to TC7, focused on the game-based learning, but they mainly focus on the non-game-based learning. That's the teaching strategy that they did in the classroom. Um, whereas for the TC1, 2, and 3, those are in-service students. So they decided to choose their own learning, learning area, a learning strategy, because uh, they are working in the schools itself. Whereas for the others, the remaining four are pre-service teachers. So it's quite difficult to gain access to schools uh, in terms of they, if they want to conduct their study. Just wanna show you um, the levels as well that they did, um, that they focused on in the research. So just a pre, these are what I've presented are just preamble or just uh, introductions of the kinds of research that our MTeach students did. So what I would like to now present is the first study of this, um, of this presentation, uh, the reflective practice by these teacher researchers. Huh? So the, again, as a summary, what the teacher candidates have to do was action research study. So they collected data and, um, and analyze it with using mixed method design. Uh, they, their instruments are pre and post tests. They have interviews or, uh, or surveys. And the main thing is they have to do that intervention lesson. So for example, um, the non-game based learning, one of the students did a tic-tac-toe game, uh, you know, the X and the zero. So that's the kind of uh, learning strategy that, they, that she did in her classroom. So typically all the, so far, typically over the years, each teacher candidate in the mathematics uh, learning area they had to focus on two research questions. So they looked at what, the, if, what are the effects of the um, using the lesson intervention strategy, uh, for example, the non-game-based -game -based learning, non-game-based learning with the student's performance in the chosen mathematics topic. And secondly, the research question is, uh, what are the student's perceptions when they implemented using the lesson intervention strategy? So the first research question it's the, the, the instrument that they use are the pre and post tests. And for the second research question, they either use interviews uh, or surveys or both. So um, this are, these are typically the research questions that they did and uh, it's the norm for every student to answer this. So in terms of action research, if the first cycle doesn't work, they have to improve their lesson plan and re reteach the lesson itself as for the second cycle. And they have to um, collect the data as well using the pre and post tests or, and or interview again. However, with the recent seven teacher candidates, 
uh, this was decided last year amongst uh, myself and my two mathematics education colleagues in the faculty, we wanted to add an additional research question. So we wanted to see what are the opportunities and challenges encountered by these teacher, research, teacher researchers throughout their study when implementing the lesson intervention strategy. Because this, um, in we, what we wanted was for them to self-reflect, do uh, reflective practice in, term, in terms of the conduct of their research. And this only happens when they do their school placement. So it, it will be good, it was good if they, it will be good if they did it in their research um, conduct of their study as well. So hence the third research question was um, added in. So with the teacher's researcher study, how uh, I will be um, analyzing this and this is the aim of the study, eh? investigating the experiences of the MTH teacher researchers' capacity to engage in reflective practice when conducting the classroom-based studies. So specifically, though, uh, the seven teacher candidates you've seen earlier, uh, the learning, is, uh, learning area is in mathematics, and it's a combination of these, mainly the secondary education teachers and the vocational uh, techni technical and education teachers. So in terms of uh, the literature review, what are the benefits of reflective practice? Well, according to Matthew, uh, Matthew and Pichatu, reflective practice is an important tool, especially in the practice-based professional uh, learning settings, because learn people need to learn from their own professional experiences rather than their formal learning or the knowledge transfer. Whereas uh, by uh, the Tidu in 2020, the, the reflecting from experience will help teachers, will facilitate teachers as researchers and reflective practitioners. So the importance of enhancing the dynamic and complementary relation, relationship between theory, research, practice, and reflection at every step of the action research itself. Furthermore, uh, Jacobs and colleagues stated that by having by doing reflective teaching, it offers the teachers the opportunity to renew their practices and to understand the outcomes of their, of their teaching. This is especially true as, uh, if, if the teacher candidates use the action research model, because it does help them to, to have that reflective uh, practice within them. Whereas Girard and Pardelis um, stated that the process of becoming teacher researcher is powerful because it challenges teachers' core beliefs and values about themselves and the work that they do. Um, and also it can lead to shifts in professional identity that are profound and long lasting. They will understand what is happening. When, when the, our teacher candidates conduct their research, they will understand what, what happens, the, the, the challenges that they go through and the opportunities uh, that they have experienced as well. So in terms of how I, the methodology in, uh, in analyzing the th third research question, it's based on the reflexive research-based account of the MTeach teacher researchers' responses to their third research question. Huh? So the, but the teacher researchers themselves collected their data using video recordings um, of their lessons video recording of their lessons and also and also they 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 kept the journal uh, throughout the the duration of their uh, du duration of their study so from my part it's a qualitative analysis of their narratives that they presented in their research exercise reports um, just to share as well that um, i did not interview them it is based on their reports that they submitted um, back in back in April. So it has been graded and everything and they are just waiting for graduation. So from there, that's where I analyzed the, uh, the, the, the data itself. So the sample, if you remember the, the table, the three were from in-service, two male and one female teachers um, and four pre-service and all um, female teachers. So the findings, just a preliminary findings that I will share here. Um, teacher, what are the challenges that they encountered 
by the teacher candidates. But the fourth teacher candidate stated that um, the duration provided to the researcher to conduct the lesson intervention was co quite compacted and limited. Uh, this was especially true if, if they conducted their study this year because of the situation where the schools ha had to close back in March. Um, so they had to be fast in terms of their collecting of their data. But it was lucky for those who collected prior to the school closure. Yeah, so it was a, a big of a challenge for all our teacher candidates. So the challenges here is the limited amount of time for the fourth teacher candidate. It, this resonates with the other teacher candidates as well. So ju I'm just sharing some of the um, narratives from the teacher candidates. Huh? And for teacher candidate six, uh, it was due to their students' weak basic knowledge, their prior knowledge of the topic, because um, with the pretest, the the pretest, um, why they have to do a pretest is because they needed to uh, test their prior knowledge on the topic. For example, if it's on fractions and decimals and percentages, the students will definitely have the prior knowledge uh, on this top on these topics. However, some may have forgotten, so. In terms of when, when the teacher, teacher candidates were doing the lesson intervention, they expected the students to understand most of the topic already, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean so. So just to summarize the challenges that were encountered by the teacher candidates, by all the teacher candidates, uh, is the time management and the limitation for the lesson interventions, especially for practice and giving feedback to the students. Um, the other challenge is um, in terms of accommodating every student's learning needs. Uh, please bear in mind, this is before the stage of COVID-19, uh, the, uh, the, the challenges that they've, they, they've encountered. Students lack of prior knowledge, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Not all students were receptive to the lesson intervention strategy. Okay. So, the second research question was what opportunities were encountered by the teacher candidates? Teacher candidate seven, they stated that the, she stated that the ability of planning and administering time and implementing the intervention as a whole. Um, the quality of planning was another factor that contributes to the effectiveness. See, if, if the teacher candidates planned well, do not leave it to the last minute, this will definitely create an opportunity for them to, to have the data that they required. Yeah, the, so teacher candidate seven acknowledged that the quality of planning could be much better. It was thoroughly planned. So the mistakes are kept to a minimum. She acknowledged that if she planned well, it, her, her, her data would, would, be, would be great. So um, it shows that teacher candidate seven did hers mainly at the last minute. Whereas for teacher candidate five, um, one of the opportunities that she stated was um, building the rapport, the students built, uh, the teacher was able to build good rapport with the students uh, when they did the study itself. Because um, with the lesson intervention, they're quite, because if it's, for example, one of the non-game-based learning, if the students are not familiar with it, they, they, the, the teachers had to do, had to explain everything to the students. So it does build sort of like a good rapport with the students. So in terms of the summary of uh, what opportunities were encountered by all the teacher candidates, they were able to reflect and plan the lesson intervention. Um, they were able to reflect on their respective teaching skills See, with, especially with the action research and the cycles itself, if the first cycle doesn't work, they have to improve on their lesson plan and their teaching skills. So that's one way of reflecting what I can do better or what I can improve on. So um, the other opportunity is they were able to uh, detect students' difficulties of the mathematics topics. And they, they were able to examine at close proximity the students' their students' attitudes or reactions. And as mentioned earlier, the process of building rapport with the students. Okay. 
So the overall findings um, of the teacher researcher study, unfortunately, not all seven of the teacher candidates were able to express in-depth self-reflection. Um, and what I have observed was that the female teacher candidates uh, were better in their self-reflection narrative accounts as compared to the male teacher candidates. I'm not sure if this resonates to the female teachers in the audience, uh, that the female are able to express themselves better compared to the male. Um, keeping reflective journals and video recordings uh, of the lessons assisted and gave them the prospects to self-reflect in their teaching professional profession journey. The video recordings was not, um, was only, especially with the situation, especially with the availability or easy access to a mobile phone nowadays. The, so they just video recorded their, their lessons using their phones. Um, some with the help of their, with their colleagues who video recorded their teaching and what's happening, what happened in the classroom. Uh, it's not, uh, I, I didn't hear any of the teacher candidates using a proper video camera to record their lesson. Main, they were mainly done using their uh, mobile phones. Uh, the reflective journals, not everybody had that as well. I think less than half of the seven teacher candidates um, only kept the journal throughout their study. Furthermore, um, what I have found as well that the teacher candidates, it, it, it has guided them to understand their competencies as a researcher within their own classroom. So once they have, were able to reflect, they were able to um, express better in terms of what they did wrong or what they can improve on, how they can help their students uh, to improve on their knowledge of the mathematics topic itself. How am I doing with time, Eva? Okay. Yes, you uh, how, have. How many more minutes ten, left? Sorry? Ten minutes left. Okay, all right. Thank you. I'll continue on with the second study. Uh, this is a collaborative online teaching and learning study with Brunei and Indonesia. Um, so with this outbreak of COVID-19, not just in our countries, but around the world, it is an evolving situation, extraordinary challenges, um, not just to the healthcare system of a country, but also to the educational providers of the nation. It is a ripple effect. So many things um, like unemployment, um, tra travels are affected by this COVID-19. So how, how do we as educators or in the education field uh, still continue with our, we have to continue with our lives anyways. Um, so we are currently experiencing a rapid and sudden change in the options as to how the teachers are teaching and how the students are learning. So just a picture of uh, one of the Zoom classes that's happening, that, was hap that happened in UBD in, in my university yeah? that was um, published earlier. So with the COVID-19, according to Baker and Wagner, this pandemic has currently grinded public to halt, public life to halt. Schools and universities are closed, conferences are canceled or postponed. Luckily, we have this online conference. Um, so if there's so many opportunities uh, that can arise from uh, any challenges here. Yeah? So in terms of the, what we can expect is the consequences of this pandemic it will definitely inspire more of such, such research in the non-traditional media. According to my Lizar and colleagues, great challenges are faced by secondary mathematics teachers in using e-learning as a tool of instruction during school closures as a result of this COVID-19 pandemic. It is not an easy, um, easy matter. Um, we, this year, a lot of changes happen, a lot of uh, people, a lot of everybody had to learn how to use Zoom, how to use, um, for, uh, in, in Brunei, the schools use Microsoft Teams, that we are not, the majority of us are not familiar with it. Um, what else? Google Docs, everybody's familiar with it. 
and there are so many other platforms as well. So in terms of the second study, the aim is to examine the views of the mathematics teachers in Brunei and Indonesia um, on the online teaching and learning implementation during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ruli Pramana, uh, Niken Wahyu Utami Laila Sapita from Jogja uh, for helping for, for the dissemination of the survey to the samples in Indonesia. Whereas for Brunei, I have used uh, two of my master's students to help me gather data for the uh, for from the Brunei from the Brunei site. So in, the, in terms of the methodology, uh, a survey was, was disseminated to the teachers. The survey from Brunei side, it was just sent by email. Uh, whereas for, from Indonesia, it, they use uh, the Google Doc forms. And this happened in March and April this year. So in the survey itself, uh, it's just a simple, very simple survey. Uh, section A asks about the background information, whereas section B, it asks about the open-ended questions on online teaching and learning. So this is, uh, these are the questions uh, for section B. For example, you, they need, uh, the teachers uh, or the participants need to share the practices they go through. They, uh, please bear in mind as well, when this survey was uh, disseminated, it was during the start of the online teaching and learning. Schools are, has already closed. Um, so they were able to answer this uh, immediately. Uh, the third question, challenges and opportunities. Um, the fourth question are how receptive, based on the teacher's observation, how receptive were the students? And question five asks about whether, whether if, if the situation continues, um, if the situation of COVID-19 improves, will, will the teachers continue or not continue with the online teaching? So in terms of the overall sample, we only had 19 teacher respondents from Brunei uh, and the subjects that they taught ranged from mathematics to physics to geography in English language. So it was um, a range of teachers from the primary, secondary to pre-university levels. And the teaching experience ranged from three months to 21 years. Okay, bear in mind Brunei's population is not many <laughs> in comparison to Indonesia. So for Indonesia, from Indonesia, there are 102 participants, uh, teacher respondents that were collected. Uh, the subjects range from mathematics, Bahasa Indonesia, um, Bahasa, a civic education, and so on. Uh, similarly, it, was, it ranged from primary to university level as well. And the um, exper teaching experience ranged from two months to 36 years. So for, what I will be presenting is only from the sample of the mathematics teachers only. Yeah? So from Brunei, there were only nine, nine mathematics teachers and from Indonesia, 38 mathematics teacher respondents. So this uh, was analyzed qualitatively. Uh, so I'm just sharing a very simple summary of uh, the data that we collected. The, the the, the first one is the practices that they go through with the online classes. Similarly, we, we, they, everybody use WhatsApp, um, Google Classroom, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams. Uh, some, do, uh, some do give out handouts as well, the hard copy handouts, because not everybody are able to afford um, uh, or, or do not have the relevant infrastructure in their, in their home or uh, wherever they are. So in terms of their responses, um, these are just evidences in the blue and the green box. Blue box represents the Brunei uh, respondent, green box represents the Indonesian respondents. Huh? Just to, as evidence that um, what are their response in terms of the practices that they go through. Whereas for the challenges that the teachers encountered with online classroom, Majority of them did say about the in limitations in the infrastructure and the access to internet and devices. Uh, there are also lack of parental involvement and support. We cannot totally um, blame the parents, of course, because the parents work as well. So not everybody will have the luxury of helping their children do their uh, schoolwork at home or online. So. Uh, strong patience from the teachers as well in terms of getting used to having an online class. 
and also for the added uh, workload for the teachers. Uh, just uh, just one or two seconds. Eh? I'll just I'll just leave this up in terms of their responses, the teachers' respondents. Um, let me read in the green box in terms of the challenges that was quoted uh, in terms of the kekurangan. Pada anda, anak didik yang tidak punya gadget dan, dan kota, lalu lalu siswa yang rumahnya jauh di desa su, susah mendapat sinyal. So this is inevitable because this yeah the signals cannot uh, they cannot be cannot be obtained and this is uh, this is what you call this um uh. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, not everybody would have that luxury uh, of having um, strong signal in terms of the internet access. Uh, for the opportunities, uh, how the teachers responded was with the, with the process of having the technology, they, it, it adds on to their knowledge on, how, on the use of it. And it also increases in the students' motivation to learn. Of course, um, at the beginning, the students, the students are quite motivated to learn because it's something new for them. So they will want to learn more. But if we ask them this question, maybe after six months, after one year, if it, the online class is still ongoing, how it, it'll be interesting to find out what the, stu what the stu students' motivation to learn will be. Yeah. Uh, so just some of the response responses from the teachers as well. Uh, quote, quoting from Brunei, students and teachers, the opportunities are learn and make use of the technology. Uh, some students acquire independent learning. They are forced due to the um, due to the online learning in the uh, at home or wherever they are. Okay, the final, uh, the final findings that we found in terms of whether they will continue or not continue if the situation has improved. What, what we have observed is that regardless of the duration of the teaching experiences between the teachers, if you remember some of the, of some of the teacher respondents were two months, uh, had two months of teaching experience to 24 years. Regardless of the teaching experiences, most stated that they are willing to use the currently available online resources for the sake of the students' learning experience. So they are willing to learn and they, are, they will continue. Again, I would emphasize if anybody was to do this kind of research, ask them again after six months, after 12 months. Let's see what, what the teachers will, will want to do next. Um, finishing soon. <laughs> um, in terms of the in terms of the takeaway message that I can I can share with everybody here, see we've uh, all of us may have identified the challenges. There's so many challenges that is happening in terms of research. Turn them into research opportunities. For example, the collaborative research between Brunei and Indonesia. Immediately, you have to change that ch the challenge. Every uh, school uh, school stopped, so we we saw. Everybody, and not just us, everybody would have to, would, uh, would see that the, there are opportunities in terms of doing research. May it be online survey, um, or online interview, Zoom interview, things like that. So hopefully the researchers out there can do that as well. Uh, do not be discouraged if challenges or issues arise before, during, uh, or after your study. Delays happen. Um, because of the school, school ha has closed and the school has reopened, the timetabling has been rescheduled. Uh, for example, some of my PhD students, what they plan in the first half of the year had to be delayed and postponed to this second half of the year. So that these uh, delays can't be avoided, but you just have to persevere and you have to be flexible as well, the importance of flexibility. Um, don't stress yourself, you cannot collect data then now there will be time to collect data further. So while waiting for anything to happen, 
search for relevant literature, literature readings as well. Um, just recently, there are so many now um, education related COVID-19 publications. Back in March, there were like a handful. Now there are plenty, read up on your literature readings. And if there are free online seminars out there, webinars, take that opportunity to register for them. Learn, learn um, if possible, what is happening around the world. Um, and these conferences as well. Just some of the references I would like to share in terms, because I've quoted quite a few uh, publications, recent and previous literature. And I'll, again, I would like to acknowledge the chairperson and members of the organizing committee of ISAMI uh, 2020, Ikip Seliwangi in Chimahi, and all these names uh, for helping collect the data and analyzing the data and everything. Okay. So thank you from me. Thank you very much, Dr. Marcita, for your informative and interesting talk. Welcome. It's time for Ms. Sarina to give the reason for the presentation using Indonesian language. Okay, baik. Terima kasih, Bapak Ibu. Saya akan uh, sedikit. Uh, gitu ya ringkasan dari apa yang telah disampaikan oleh Dr. Masita di sini beliau uh, terfokus penelitiannya beliau ini yang pertama untuk penelitian pertama ini terkait dengan uh, tantangan apa saja dan kesempatan atau menjadi partisipannya di Brunei Darussalam di uh, universitinya uh, Dr. Masita sendiri dan di sini ditemukan dari uh, penelitian pertama yang sudah dilaksanakan yaitu uh, tantangan yang dialami oleh calon guru itu terkait penelitian ini terkait dengan pandemi COVID-19. Kemudian yang berikutnya tantangan yang dihadapinya adalah pengetahuan pengetahuan dasar siswa yang sedang diteliti itu dengan topik matematika yang sedang uh, strategi yang sedang diuji cobakan di sana. Kemudian juga uh, tantangan berikutnya yang diambil akomodasi kembali. Uh, dan strategi uh, waktu pada saat uh, meng... uh, sedikit. Kemudian uh, kita melihat uh, opportunities atau kesempatan dari sisi positifnya sendiri, ini diperlukan adanya perencanaan yang berkualitas. Jadi tidak hanya perencanaan biasa saja, tapi perlu ada perencanaan yang berkualitas karena ini dapat memberikan kontribusi positif. Kemudian juga uh, sisi positifnya adalah siswa dapat uh, apa ya membangun hasil belajar mereka yang baik bersamaan dengan guru didamping oleh guru mereka. Kemudian juga refleksi uh, dan merencanakan sebuah perencanaan pembelajaran atau biasa kita tahu RPPH ya atau lesson plan dan uh, kemampuan dari uh, kemampuan mengajar dari guru tersebut juga kemudian yang berikutnya adalah kemampuan untuk menavigasi sikap siswa terhadap topik tersebut dan data-data tersebut pun itu bisa dikumpulkan melalui rekaman video untuk refleksi yang dapat uh, memberikan data yang lebih untuk uh, proses uh, penelitian berikutnya. Kemudian adalah kolaboratif ya antara uh, dengan guru, guru-guru sembilan belas ini ini yang kita tahu banyak sekali tantangan yang harus dihadapi dari mulai sosial ekonomi. I'm sorry, there is an unstable connection.
Baik, saya teruskan kembali. Jadi untuk penelitian kedua ini pandangan guru-guru yang ada di Brunei dan Indonesia dalam guru matematika yang ada di Brunei dan 38 orang guru matematika yang ada di Indonesia untuk tantangannya sendiri yang dialami oleh para partisipan tersebut ini terkait dengan infrastruktur yang berkait sinyal maksud kami stabil. Kemudian juga uh, kurangnya peran orang tua dalam membantu siswa selama pembelajaran online ini berlangsung. Kemudian ini tantangannya terletak di pada saat uh, mengelatih kesabaran guru yang cukup tinggi ini juga sama apabila melihatnya atau sisi positifnya sendiri ini menjadikan guru menjadi lebih melek teknologi lagi kemudian juga meningkatkan motivasi anak untuk belajar kemudian juga dapat meningkatkan kreativitas guru dan anak kemudian juga hal yang terakhir yang tadi disinggung oleh dokter Masita apa adalah apabila covid ini juga tetap berlangsung ini ada beberapa guru yang menyatakan bahwa akan rela ini dan Uh, ada beberapa tadi ada beberapa pesan-pesan uh, baik pesan yang tadi disampaikan oleh uh, kita harus bisa mengidentifikasi uh, bagi COVID-19 ini juga bisa melalui daring online kemudian juga ketika ada banyak free online kan oleh para guru ilmu pengetahuannya terima kasih well thank you Miss Sarina Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to question, question and answer session. There will be 20 minutes for Q&A session. Please mention your name and state. Any question, please raise your hand. I will call your name and you can unmute your mic. mic. Please raise your hand if there are any question. Okay, uh, I have uh, one question for you, uh, Dr. Marsita. Yeah. Uh, what te technique are able to use for teaching mathematics in this pandemic? How to make uh, online learning become the one fun learning? And what are the like of uh, online learning and how to overcome them? Can you repeat the last sentence? Uh, what are the lack of online learning lack, okay. uh, and how, yeah, how to overcome uh, them, how overcome the lack, the, the worst of online learning? Okay, let's see. Um, with the technique, the technique... Uh, the best technique. I wouldn't say that... Um, okay, okay, this... Don't talk... You can quote me on this, or you cannot quote me on this, or you don't have to quote me on this. Huh? I would, I would say, not don't don't use hundred percent online. It, it'll be better if it's hybridized in terms of um, when you give the you can give the lecture using or the the, the introduction or the explanation using online. If not, it, you can also video record it. However. When you have the when you do exercises with your students, um, if possible, try to minimize it. Like to do it in groups. I know it will be more added, uh, more added, added time for your teaching workload. But I would say hybridize in terms of um, do this bit of this and a bit of that, because if it's hundred percent, 
the, you, you've seen the, the from Professor, uh, uh, Professor Ewis just now, the pictures of the students uh, sleeping after 20 minutes, that, well, 15, 20 minutes. So yeah. the, lack, the, the introduction yeah. video recording. Yeah, it, it, it should only be like five minutes. Um, and, and try to yeah. blend it or co combine it with perhaps animations or YouTube videos you found uh, the, the teaching resources online. So in terms of that, that's how I would say um, technique uh, in, to do the online classroom. Um, you've, seen, you've seen the tables before in my presentation. Uh, the, the first batch did the research on comics, second batch uh, are doing it. Um, I have done it in terms of the non-game based digital learning. With my third batch of current MTeach students, the ones I'm supervising, I told them to do research in online teaching and learning. Fully utilize whatever is happening at the moment and continue. Even, even, even though the schools in Brunei has reopened 100% um, attendance now, uh, try to still incorporate the use of online learning. Uh, not all, but some of it into their teaching. So they, 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 my, my, my supervisors are actually conducting data and collecting data for online learning as well. Um, so if, do not stop 100% in terms of your online teaching and learning as well. Um, your final question, Eva, was about, uh, can you repeat that again? Lack of online learning. What, what do you mean by that? that and how to overcome it? What do you mean by lack of online learning? Okay. Uh, what is the deficiency or maybe uh, kekurangan, kekurangan of ya. online learning? Oh, yes. Sungguh banyak. <laughs> Dan bagaimana uh, mengatasinya? mengatasinya. Uh, as, uh, how to solve it because uh, as we know the online learning it's so hard to use in mathematics education yes definitely uh, especially with if you have a if you have to explain uh, I'll give you an example of my pre, uh, last month my student was asking me uh, to review her video on how to teach the students to read using the protractor yeah, and our drawing of angles. So she showed me a video on how she video, her, she recorded the instruction using her mobile phone and she uploaded on YouTube. So when you upload things on YouTube, make sure it's private or uh, it, it's not public. So it, you can only share that video with your students. So the students can, if they don't understand it, when they watch it the first time, they don't understand it, they can just, Rewatch it again, you know, uh, balik balik, especially with YouTube or any yeah. video recorded. So um, that is one way of how to use the instruction in terms of teaching mathematics in the classroom. Record how you will how you teach it. Um, there are so many. There are so many. Um, what do you call this? Uh, so many barriers in terms of online teaching. Wait. Yeah, there are many. There are there are ways to do it. There, if you look at, um, I, I'm not, I'm, I can't think of specifically which website, but oh yeah, Han Academy, K-H-A-N. They do have uh, how to teach certain mathematics instruction or topics in their website. Do not, do not invent something new. Make fully utilize whatever is out there in the, in, on, the, on the internet, but make sure it's a legit, a legit website, not just any, any website that you can utilize huh? um, because you do not want to convey the wrong the wrong information to your own students so the my advice is look for any available um, in uh, self-help videos out there um, there's so many and in terms of that's how you would overcome it as well um sekolah-sekolah di indonesia sudah buka ya mas bagian in okay. a green zone okay. for the green zone that's the, green the zone. yellow green yeah. uh, yellow zone red zone it's not able to uh, 
to open yet. Yeah, open. Yeah, so it, we as teachers, of course, we understand that uh, we worry about catching up with the syllabus, how to finish the syllabus yeah. before the start of the school year, right? Yes. Well, hopefully the ministry or um, your ministry will be able to, you know, understand and be flexible in terms of the expectations of the examinations, yeah. the tests, because yeah. um, this is so unexpected, just like Different O levels. Yeah. Exactly. O, o, uh, uh, we have O levels or A levels. Uh, masuk, uh, A levels is the one for to untuk masuk universitas. Yeah. Um, See, those kind of national uh, um, big exams around the world, it's no longer exams. They just use 100% um, coursework, so assignments, things like that. Uh, do you have that in Indonesia or do you expect your students to have uh, to pass exams as well? Yes, there is no UN here, uh, final test. Like mm. UN, it's no. Uh, so use Zoom use Zoom to enter the school. But to enter the university, uh, there is some tests. Tests, right? And yeah. they cannot change it to 100% coursework. No tests, just Not give that. out assignment. Uh, no, I mean, do you have that in Indonesia? I don't no. know. No. Mm. So maybe you don't, but yeah. Um, yeah, the, the authorities or the policy makers, they need to help. Yeah help the teachers in terms of what needs to change, what doesn't need to change, um, and be flexible and be understanding yeah. on how to resolve this matter. Yes, but for elementary school, for middle yeah. school, there is no test. Oh, there is good. use Zoom, oh, use Zone, Zona. What, what is Zona? Uh, the, the student who near the school uh -huh. uh, can enter that school. I see. Zona. There is a zona C. Ah, okay. Uh, not test, but there is a zona C. Yeah. And right. uh, yeah. So mm. the students who uh, her house, uh, their house mm -hmm. near the school can, can enter the that school. Okay. But there is no final test. I see. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. Did they change it recently, or has it always been like that? Uh. Recently, but oh, they uh, it. yeah, they changed it. Mm. Uh, in Brunei as well, if I can share, uh, back in March, because we know that um, not everybody can afford to have, uh, you know, an unlimited internet quota, or not everybody has a computer or laptop at home. So what happened was uh, the Ministry of Education gave the flexibility for their teachers to print out hard copies or, or learning package. So the parents have to go to the school, collect the learning package. Oh. Um, so they, uh, so not every teacher in the primary school uh, or even in the secondary school have online lessons. Okay. So they, they, they learn independently. They are given exercises and the, the parents have to help return after a few days. So not everybody has online lessons as well. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, for some school here, do the same. Oh, that's good. See, I think uh, in our region, we, we learn from each other what are the best practices and we try to help out each other as well. Yes. You know? Yes. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Somebody uh, raised their hand. Somebody? Yeah. Uh, Asep Yusuf. Oh, yeah. Asep Yusuf. Okay. Mr. Asep Yusuf. Can you unmute? Yes, selamat assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Izin bertanya uh, kepada Miss Masita ya. Iya. Yeah. Pertanyaannya bagaimana uh, tipsnya agar kita bisa melakukan penelitian sementara kan dalam masa pandemi ini eh uh, banyak sekolah yang tidak mengizinkan kita untuk penelitian gitu karena kan terbatas dengan hmm. uh, ajaran daring atau online seperti saat ini itu saja. Okay, Eva, can you please uh, no, um, translate because I don't, uh, I, I'm not, I don't understand penelitian. Okay, penelitian is a research. Ah, how research. to? 
Yes. Oh, sorry. Is it Sharina who's supposed to yes. interpret? Okay. Sorry, Sharina. <laughs> it's okay, doctor. <laughs> okay. How to get the permission from the school mm -hmm. to uh, to get the permission from uh, the school during this pandemic? To conduct the research. Yeah, to conduct the research. Or perhaps uh, to collect data as well. Yeah, right? to collect data as well. Okay. Uh, one one of the important things that I advise my my students, my supervisees, is you need to have good communication with the school. You have to have that good rapport with that school. Uh, I hope Pak Asep kenal tenaga tenaga guru di sekolah itu supaya senang apa then you can arrange some kind of um, when to when to when to observe the class or collect data you either using whatsapp or using phone facetime or zoom things like that it, it, it i know it's it is very difficult but um, having that connection with that school having to negotiate with that school bagaimana uh, untuk collect data even if it's not now perhaps next month or next week, you have to plan in advance. You have to have that um, good connection with the teachers and the school. Di uh, baik-baiki, supaya senang dibagi access untuk sekolah itu sendiri. This is what happened to my students, uh, to my supervisors currently. Uh, and alhamdulillah, she was, able, yeah, she was able to collect her data. Pertanyaannya, jadi dibaik-baikin PDKT dulu sama sekolahnya gitu ya. Jadi uh, kenal juga sama gurunya. Jadi kita dapat uh, apa mendapatkan akses akses yang baik. Dan dari situ setelah PDKT kita bisa menyusun jadwal kapan ketemunya. Entah itu misalkan ngambil datanya bisa uh, luring atau daring. Seperti itu Pak Asep. Terima kasih. Thank you Sharida. Oke. Okay. Because time is over, there is no question. Uh, yes, no more. Uh, because time is over. Thank you very much for Dr. Marcita for the time, for your informative and interesting talk. Nice to see you. Me too. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we come to the end of the presentation. We would like to say thanks again for the presenter, for the for her informative and interesting talk and to audience for your active participation. Hopefully the presentation will be beneficial for everybody. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for the moderator and for the uh, third uh, speakers for this international seminar. before we have the next session at 1 p.m. So make sure that uh, you uh, go back to our Zoom at 1 p.m. So thank you for your attention and have a great break. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, be informed to all the speakers here uh, from Dr. Masita, Dr. Iman, and all the speakers. If you want to join uh, our next session, you can uh, access again. Okay. Okay, for all the speakers uh, who want to uh, join again our the next session at 1 p.m. So you can uh, access the same link 
the sub link of Zoom meeting at 1 p.m. Thank you very much. <clears throat>Ya, baik. Uh, terima kasih untuk para partisipan. Silahkan untuk uh, meninggalkan ruangan uh, Zoom meeting ini. Nanti kita akan kembali pukul 1 siang untuk uh, acara yang berikutnya. Jadi silahkan kepada semua partisipan untuk leave meeting saja. Nanti kembali lagi ke Zoom meeting dengan link yang sama. Dengan link yang sama. Terima kasih.